So now we're going to move on to the types of breast cancer, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Smith. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to join this webinar, and I hope it's very useful to everyone. Um, I'm going to go through some of the more medical parts of this presentation, and really um, both the medical part and the taking care of the, the whole person, the parts that Lily uh, is reviewing, really go hand in hand, and having a whole um, holistic approach to breast cancer care is really what we think is best. Um, but this is going to be sort of a, a little educational part. Um, so I want to start by looking at the way we break down breast cancer into different types. Breast cancer can be classified in many different ways. Um, for example, we can describe the way the cells look under the microscope, such as ductal or lobular cancer. And we can describe specific changes or mutations in the genes in the cancer cells. We can also describe whether the cancer is due to an alteration in a specific gene that you may have inherited from your mother or father, such as a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. However, um, the really the most important way that we classify breast cancer when it comes to treatment is to describe both the extent of disease and the markers or the receptors. When we say extent of disease, that's really a way of thinking about the amount of cancer and the goals of treatment. Um, breast cancer can broadly be grouped into early stage and advanced or metastatic. And this webinar is focusing on advanced or metastatic breast cancer. Within the category of metastatic breast cancer, another important factor that we think about is what parts of the body are involved. Common sites of metastasis include the bones, the lungs, the liver, lymph nodes, and brain. And when breast cancer spreads to another part of the body, like those that we just reviewed, it's still breast cancer. For example, breast cancer spread to the lungs is breast cancer and not lung cancer. So let's talk a little bit, little bit about the markers. These are receptors or markers. They're specific proteins or genes that cancer cells may express, and we can quantify them in a sample that we analyze in the laboratory. Two very important ones are the hormone ones, and those are the estrogen receptor and the progesterone receptor, and those are receptors for the female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Uh, we know that hormones can attach to the receptors inside cancer cells and stimulate growth. A third important marker is HER2, which is the abbreviation for human epidermal growth factor receptor number two. HER2 is on the surface of cancer cells, and if turned on, can cause cells to grow and divide. And some breast cancer cells either produce too much of it or have too many HER2 genes. And those are the breast cancer cells that are considered to be HER2 positive. If you, we have a situation in which a breast cancer does not have any of these markers, it doesn't have the estrogen receptor or the progesterone receptor or HER2, that would be called a triple negative breast cancer. Breast, cancer, the breast cancers that are positive for one or both of the hormone receptors, progesterone and, re and estrogen receptors, are considered hormone receptor positive. Breast cancers that have none of the receptors are considered triple negative. And then we can also have breast cancers that are both hormone receptor positive and HER2 positive. So let's talk a little bit more about the importance of classifying uh, breast cancer into these different types. By classifying breast cancer according to the extent of disease and according to the estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2 status, your healthcare providers can give you information about your prognosis, and they can use this information to individualize your therapy. There are an infinite number of possibilities, but here are some examples of how we use this information. So the most, one of the most common sites to which breast cancer, or the most common sites to which breast cancer spreads is going to differ according to the estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2 status. So for example, brain metastases are a bit more common in HER2 positive breast cancer. Continuing um, with that example, we can use that kind of information to know if we should do surgery, radiation, and or systemic therapy. For example, with the brain metastasis situation, we often end up needing both radiation and possibly surgery. Finally, we can use this information, the estrogen and progesterone receptor and HER2 status, to determine the types of medications that are, that are most likely to be beneficial. For example, we would use hormonally-based treatments for hormone receptor-positive breast cancer. 